The Honourable Member for Dartmouth North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you to everyone who has spoken already uh, to voice opposition to this bill. And I'm just going to add my own voice uh, for a few minutes. Um, <coughs> years ago, I dropped into the junior high school where my older brother David was a uh, vice principal, uh, just to say hi. And um, he was busy with a student, and so he told me to go sit in his office, <laughs> which I'm sure he does did all the time to students. Uh, but when I was sitting there waiting for him, I noticed on his desk a big bowl of jelly beans. And uh, when he came back in to say hi, um, I, you know, in my youthful ignorance, basically, uh, I said, I thought you were the vice principal of the school. Uh, isn't it you that deals with all the, the kids who get in trouble? Like, aren't you the disciplinarian here? Why would you have jelly beans on your desk? And without a beat, he said, it's the kids who get in trouble who need the jelly beans. <laughs> and that made so much sense to me. In that moment, I felt ashamed, actually, that I hadn't really thought about that. I hadn't really given much thought to that idea. Um, but in that one reply, my brother, who has taught me about many valuable lessons, um, he d demonstrated a deep understanding of human nature. And some of the reasons why a kid might show up in his office having done something or maybe not done anything to get in trouble. And this is just one example of how he knew how to connect with and support the students of his school. Over the last several weeks, I have heard from countless teachers and parents in my riding and from all around the province. I think many of us have heard from uh, people from around the province who, as we've mentioned, uh, whose MLAs refuse to respond to them around this issue. Teachers are worried sick, literally. They are demoralized by the fact that they continue to not be listened to by this government. And at the heart of their worry is the fact that with all of these education reforms, there's nothing in them that will help our students. And in fact, these changes could cause more chaos in the lives of our children. Throughout the last year or two, the teachers have become extremely vocal about what they need to help our children be successful. And some of these things are addressed in the Glaze Report, but these are not the recommendations that the government is in such a rush to, to adopt. Instead, they, they have chosen to remove administrators from their union and to eliminate de democratically elected school boards, eliminating local voices from around the province, and most worrying to me, the voices of African Nova Scotian and Mi'kmaq voices. Even though my riding, Dartmouth North, is, in par is a part of the HRM, uh, and so really not on the outskirts and uh, in these rural areas where this could be really concerning, there are parts of my community that have been pushed to the edge of society and experienced significant issues in terms of poverty, lack of sufficient health care, lack of affordable housing, social exclusion, and food insecurity. And in a community like that, there is understandably huge trust issues. I've heard time and again that people are tired of politicians and bureaucra bureaucrats unconnected to the community coming in to try to fix things, fix what's wrong, and then leaving often when results cannot be uh, achieved in a timely fashion. For such a community, removing local school board voices, in particular the African Nova Scotian representative, representative is, a sig is a signal that the voices in Dartmouth North are not important mm -hmm. and that the children's success is not a priority. The government's answer to this, to, the, to this is school advisory committees, but it should be said that in communities where a majority of families can't afford to make ends meet and parents are struggling to keep food on the table, most likely there are not going to be a whole lot of parents who have time to sit on SACs. I would also be remiss if I didn't echo my colleagues' deep concern about the silencing of women's voices in all of this. As I mentioned in remarks the other day on another bill, there's a lot of patting each other on the back in this chamber because we have elected so many women to this house. But still, in this legislature, our federal parliament and in our municipal counc councils all around the province, we have not reached gender parity with our elected officials. And the one place that we have, the one place that we have gender parity or more, uh, are democratically elected school board members the government has seen, to ax, seen fit sorry, to ax these positions and to take over the decision-making that those bodies, those women, were in charge of. 
So I'm just going to leave my remarks there. I thought I would be, oh no, five minutes, that's cool. Uh, I'm going to leave my remarks there and in an effort to allow the people of Nova Scotia to get to speak to this bill at law amendments. But I will close by saying I wholeheartedly oppose this bill and the effects it will have on our students in Nova Scotia. Thank you.